from Las Vegas, it's the, 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 the Tom Micah Show. You put this in your mouth and it is just zippy. And now, and now here he is, Tom Micah. Thank you for tuning into the Tom Micah Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No. I am your host. Write down our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Thank you for tuning in. Here we are, coming to you from Las Vegas with a brand spanking new episode of the Tom Likas Show. And we have wide open telephones on the Tom Likas Show. Coming up later this hour, uh, Skylar Stone is going to join us, comedian Skylar Stone. And he's got a story that's going to knock you out. Coming up this hour, Skylar Stone. But in the meantime, it's you and me and wide open telephones here on this Friday where anything goes, anything at all. We can talk about anything that's on your mind. It can be anything that came up on the program this week. I'm amazed at how many calls we've gotten about Wamu and the economy and the bailout. I'm, I'm blown away because our audience generally doesn't talk about that stuff, but you know it's scaring people when our audience is paying attention to it. Wow. Uh, so without uh, solicitation, we've gotten a lot of calls and emails about these topics. You can call in and talk about these or any other topics we've discussed on the air. You can call up and talk about anything you think we should have talked about this week. You can call up, yell, scream, complain, jump up and down. It's all fair game as long as you're absolutely fascinating. And if you're not, we kick your, <laughs> you kick your ass the hell off the phone. It's that simple. You just call us here at 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. It's Tom on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Mr. Likas, well, yes. I, I've got one question for you, and, and this is based off of your expert opinion, which I'm hoping is absolutely fascinating because I honestly don't trust myself that much. But John McCain, I want to know what you think about this 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 move, this decision to make by by this Republican Party to go to go from one decision, one day running this campaign, and the next flipping it around and saying, you know, we're going to stop this campaign to focus on the economy, and that same day, uh, this bailout falling through, and then the next day, John McCain saying, you know what, we probably should have a debate, and, and so I guess the final question comes down to, what do you think of John McCain's decision to? First of all, postpone the debate, and then second of all, to reconvene and, and go for it. I think it was a miscalculation on John McCain's part. I think he thought he could get Obama to appear to be giving in. And when Obama said he would do the debate alone, that he would be there and be prepared for the debate, he forced McCain's hand. I, I, I absolutely agree. I, and I was honestly hoping... Be because of that, to see Obama take the stage alone and stand up there for an hour and a half and do whatever the hell he wanted. You know, I'm still absolutely excited that the debate's going to go through. I think it's something the American people need to see and are, are expecting to see, are, are deserving of, of seeing. But regardless, th this whole thing to me seems like, seems like grandstanding. It seems like a political move, and it seems like one that failed. Well, yeah, you know, John McCain's always the first one to accuse Barack Obama of uh, 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 doing things for political gain. Uh, you know, the, the real truth is both of these guys are lousy debaters, both of them. Uh, McCain is a little slow on the uptake, a uh, little inarticulate. Obama's very articulate, but he sounds like a professor, and he bores people to sleep. No doubt. No so, doubt. I, so both of them had a, had something to gain by not doing the debate. Uh, but Obama stood his ground and McCain blinked. He, not only did he blink, but I, I'm really curious. I'm, I'm heading home now trying to beat this traffic in this 405 gridlock to, to see what's going on. But absolutely, I, I can't wait. It almost feels like a UFC fight. That's how exciting it is. And, and this is politics. It, 
it's amazing that we can go from something this, so boring. This debate like, will be nothing like a UFC fight. <laughs> this is, in a UFC fight, you know, uh, guys get turned over and get their legs bent out of shape and everything. Uh, in this thing, it's going to be too dull as dry as watching paint dry. Two boring guys uh, trying to find, and they're going to say how much they agree with each other. That's what they end up doing. They both do it in debates, and they will do it here. Oh, see, I didn't even think about that. You're right. You know what? It's the pundits the day after that that's going to be the UFC fight, listening to all of them explain and, and analyze these two people. You're absolutely right, Tom, as usual. I, I really don't think a debate is even necessary this year. You, These guys are so different uh, in reality, and you know where one stands and you know where the other stands. You know, as far as I'm concerned, let's get to the election. Let's do it. That's true. That's true. You know what, though? After the Katie Couric thing, I, I'm, I'm absolutely uh, can't wait to see the debate between Biden and Palin, if anything, ju just for laughs. Just for laughs. Well, I want to know what excuse Palin's going to come up with for not showing up. Uh, that's true, you know. She's got to do something. I mean, she's got to follow suit, right? She's yeah, got to follow her commander. <laughs> she, might, she might have to stay back in Alaska because it's the first day of cougar hunting season. <laughs> awesome, Tom. Awesome. All right, well... Don't want to take too much of your time. I'm heading home. Take me out with a bong rip, and I appreciate it. Thank you, Father. There you go, Tom. <coughs> it's one eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom, this is Stephen on the Tom Like His Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. How you doing? I'm doing okay. Well, Tom, you know the economy's gotten so bad, buddy, that uh, you know I'm a truck driver to start off with, and. Uh, they cut our hours, and I just, something came into my head, and we figured, you know what? I think me and my wife should do homemade porn, and I convinced her, and sure enough, we're doing it, man. You're doing homemade porn? Absolutely. Now, do you have scripts and stuff? How do you do this? No, we just, you know what? The way we do it is that, you know, we just freestyle it. And then, of course, my cousin's a computer genius, so he's the one who edits everything. You know, we just do whatever we can, you know. Your cousin and, edits this? Yes. Has your has your cousin ever seen your hairy ass before? No, and speaking of my hairy ass, it's 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 not the prettiest one. But <laughs> hey, uh, hey, it's bringing in money, man. I mean, uh, we have three kids, you know. Obviously, but oh, you, they must be proud. And and where do you uh, advertise your pornography? Huh? Pornrabbit dot com, and it has like separate, like it, it has like uh, like on the bottom, it has like homemade porn icons on there. But you got to be careful, you know. Just try not to click on the wrong icon, and then everything else will pop up. You got to be careful when you do that. I'll, I'll save myself the trouble. I just won't go there. <laughs> yeah, but, you know, the, like I said, the economy's gotten so horrible, man. It, it, it's rolling in some dough. It's not much, but you know what? It helps. Now, uh, is it just the two of you, or uh, for porn purposes, do you invite uh, guest stars? You know what? I would like, I would love to have Sarah Palin because she is so hot, man. I would bang her in a heartbeat. But well, being that she's not available, uh, do you invite in, like, neighbors and others? Uh, we're, I, I think I'm trying to work on that, but I don't think she'll be down with that, honestly. You know, hey, if she has a Why do you guys go to the PTA meeting and look for uh, potential uh, actors to work with you? Uh, you know what? I, If anything, it'll just be a girl, man. Just, I, 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 I couldn't picture some other dude banging my wife. I couldn't well, do that. I've, I've, I've got a greasy Italian right here <laughs> who's Italian. ready to go. He'll play the pizza guy. I, that's exactly right, Gary. He'll play the pizza guy. <laughs> I'm ready well, to rock. Yeah, well, he'll, you know, he'll, like, he'll knock on your door and go, I brought sausage. Hey, the, the guy might be hung like a horse, man. No way he's going to kill my wife. Well, uh, yeah, I don't know. I Frankly, thank God, I don't know uh, how uh, uh, what Dean's attributes are. I don't know. <laughs> Peroni, I'll tell you what, he's the guy. Oh, did he curse? Yeah! Oh, ruined a perfectly good call. Zero tolerance policy. Pal. Save the porn for home when your kids are home, okay? I wonder what the neighbors think about that. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. This is Jennifer on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Is it's that your first time caller? Yes, Jennifer. I wanted to talk to you about that slut in Florida who might have murdered her young daughter, the missing baby, Kaylee Anthony. Yes. Have you followed that story? Uh, I've heard about it, but, you know, come on. Uh, that's, that's MSNBC's lifeblood. 
Uh, I, I can't yeah. bear it. I know, I know, I know. It's it's a, I know. It's like a soap opera. But I wanted to tell the caller, any guy who listens to this show, because you always promote safe sex and telling guys don't get girls pregnant. She is the poster child for that. She's 22. She possibly murdered her daughter. It's the most tragic story I've been following, and I really believe you are doing a public service. I mean, I'm 38 years old, and I'm a mom, and I love you. <laughs> really? But I do. And, guys, keep the condoms on. Don't get the sluts pregnant. It's not worth it. And it could end up tragically. I mean, it's more serious than ruining your life and not being able to go to college and all that. So, I, you, I obviously, you don't know all the details of this case, but it's just, it's sorted, and, and she's just, she's a partying loser who obviously got pregnant too early, and that's what you talk about all the time on this show, right? Uh, uh, yep, yeah. and the guys ought to know. I mean, you got to wear a condom. Uh, if somebody's a partying slot, that's okay. Don't let them know where you live. Don't let them know your name. Hit it and quit it. But a lot of these guys fall in love with a whore. I don't get it. I don't get it. Jennifer, thanks a lot for the call. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Let's say hello here to uh, Todd on the Tom Likens Show. Hello. Hey, Dad. How's it going? Son, I'm doing great. Oh, Tom, we need you out here, man. Thanks for looking out for us, us guys. Absolutely. I uh, wish I was in Vegas with you. Yeah, well, come on out. Uh, the game is tomorrow night. <laughs> Bring some warm clothes. Well, yeah, if you're going to sit downstairs with us, yes. Exactly. Hey, I'm calling about the bailout scenario. Um, I'm pissed off like everybody else. And I know that the homeowners are at fault for getting the loans that they couldn't afford. But the banks, you know, they're they're guilty for being greedy and the whole bit, you know. Um, By the way, there's nothing wrong with being greedy. No, there's not, you know, and that's how money is made, but... Um, Taking stupid risks, there's something wrong with, but, uh, you know, if I own stock in a company, I want that company to make as much money as it can. Exactly. Um, my thing is, um, you know, this bailout is going to cost, this is what I heard anyway, that for every man, woman, and child out there in the country, it's going to cost you $2,500 a head to, to cover that uh, bailout funding is that true i have not uh, sat down and done the long division but i'm sure it's a lot but i'm sure your grandchildren will be very industrious right my quick my question is the um you know if we were to just let these banks fail you know and let them fall because there's there's more than one bank out there i mean there's a lot of other banks that pick up the slack and what if instead of giving that 700 billion dollars or whatever that is to the banks to bail them out let them fail, but then all those mortgages, let them zero out all those people's mortgages and let them start using that money. That well, even. I have a problem with that because uh, many of those people who took those mortgages knew damn well they didn't have the money to buy a house. Uh, they took uh, stated income loans where they lied about their income. Uh, many of them bought houses they, where they were way in over their head. I mean, they're just as much at fault as the banks are. Yeah, I know it's why should those why should those greedy bastards be rewarded with being able to keep those houses? Well, because it, to me it's like why not give the money back to the people instead of the bank, you know, instead of hey, the, How about you know what? I say give the money to people who don't have a house. Give the money to people who've been waiting to buy a house but because they're responsible, they didn't buy houses they couldn't afford. If you want to give money to people, give money to people who've been saving up for a 20% down payment. Give money to people who have a FICO score over 800. Give money to people who pay their taxes and do everything right. Don't give money to those greedy bastards who thought they were going to get into the real estate business. Honey, we'll buy a house, we'll paint it, and we'll flip it. Don't, don't reward those people. That's why I called in. I, I don't know why I hate, I don't know who I hate more, them or the banks. I know, and it's a big mess. You know, I pay my mortgage. I pay, and I have more than one mortgage, you know, and it's sometimes it's not easy. Sometimes my tenants are late, and I'm struggling. You know, i got to pull it together out of my own pocket to make it happen. And uh, But then I look at these people who just had a free-for-all, and now that they're, I'm going to pay for it like everybody else. It, it, you know, it pisses me off. See, every one of those bastards kicked out of those houses they bought that they can't afford. Every single one of them. 
Yeah, I mean, they should take that money. You're right. They should reward the good people and let everybody else scrounge for themselves. That's what they should do. Or, you know what they should do? Take $700 billion and apply it to the budget. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I remember we had a surplus, you know, before, uh, you know, Bush got into the office and then, the, you know, the country, for some idiotic reason, reelected that buffoon. Well, uh, you know, that's that's the bottom line there, is that the Republican Party has successfully convinced people that Democrats are tax and spenders. They're tax and spenders. Uh, Democrats are taxers. Republicans are spenders. Democrats are taxing to make up for all the problems that the Republicans were doing. Well, though. and the Democrats are pussies, and they never articulate that, and that's why they're losers. Yeah, they don't have any balls. You know, if they got balls, they'd have something there. They don't have any goddamn balls at all. They're the most politically incorrect group of pussies. Democrats are pussies. Why are you running for president? My God, you'd you straighten this out. Well, because the people like to be lied to. That's what they like. Hey, the hell, they like Bush for eight years. <laughs> I know. I know. You know, you know, we're, you know, we're laughing stock to the rest of the world. It, it's unfortunate, but... No, no, but Bush has everyone convinced, along with his uh, cohorts, Rush Limbaugh and Sean Hannity, that we shouldn't care what other countries think of us. Well, you know, let me tell you something. The only thing that's missing is uh, Dan Quayle as the vice president. Then we'd be complete. Well, we have Dan Quayle Sr. as the president right now. <laughs> exactly. That's what I'm saying. You know? Jesus. Um, it, hey, I got a joke. Well, sort of a joke. You want to hear it? Well, if it's clean. Because we have a zero-tolerance policy. Oh, yeah. It's clean, Dad. It's clean. All right. I had a mother sitting, has to, has to sit down with her daughter because her daughter's becoming of age. She says, honey, men are going to want you to do something that you're not going to want to do, but you're going to have to do it, and you're going to do it until you can get them to marry you. And after you get them to marry you, you won't have to do it anymore at all. And what that is is work. Ah, there we go. <laughs> There we go. Of course, I got a joke for you. I was reminiscing with the guys today. They don't they don't tell these jokes anymore. Uh, these are the jokes that uh, I miss the days of jokes like this. Uh, are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. All right, what's the difference between a bucket full of bowling balls and a bucket full of dead babies? I don't know, Dad. And, and I was offended thinking back that we used to tell this joke freely. Offensive, very offensive. You can't unload bowling balls with a pitchfork. <laughs> You're going to get some calls. Now. Well, oh, maybe so. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. I'm 35 years old, and I'm going to be honest with you. My dad was a big pussy, and so I adopted a lot of pussy ways from him. And then I started listening to you, and I swear, man, I mean, I've learned more from one episode of your show than I learned from my dad in my entire life. It's the Tom Likas Show. Show. Thank you so much for tuning in. Here we are in Las Vegas. We are here with the Los Angeles Kings. The Kings playing their annual Frozen Fury game. It's a preseason game against the Colorado Avalanche. As the new NHL season ramps up. Actually, we are uh, still a couple of weeks away yet from uh, opening night. But um, how much fun is this? What an excuse to come to Las Vegas, I'll tell you that. Anyway, we have uh, Skylar Stone in studio with us. Good to see you. What's up, buddy? Not much doing my thing here. Vegas. You gotta love it. Put a hundred on black right now. <laughs> I'm putting a hundred on just about everything. <laughs> That's my deal. I don't know what that means. <laughs> there you go. Put a hundred on that. <laughs> so what are you up to? All kinds of stuff, man. Um, I just, uh, you know, a few months ago wrapped that um, I, got, I had my first lead role in a movie. So I heard about this, and it, was it with Danny DeVito? Yes, it was. And wow. uh, what a what a way to start! I know. I'm actually playing his son, which doesn't make any sense because I'm blonde and somewhat tall. So you know, <laughs> it uh, it was it was it was odd to get that call. They're like, "Yeah, you're gonna be Danny DeVito's son." I'm like, "Fine, let's do it." Well, if uh, Danny DeVito could play the twin of Arnold Schwarzenegger, anything's possible. Yeah, I guess his casting makes sense. Yeah, it's it's a funny movie. It's a uh, it's called Housebroken, and it's like. Uh, 
it's like Home Alone for 20-somethings. It's, it's about a dad that wants to get his kids out of the house, so he leaves us by ourselves to fend for ourselves and pay bills, and, you know, he, he sends a bunch of obstacles our way, and we have to, like, get by, and it's, uh, it's, like, it's like a tale of growing up, I suppose. Now, what's it like working with Danny DeVito, who's got to, to just this amazing history? And, uh, you know, he, I've loved him in so many things. Is, is, is he fun to work with? He, he absolutely was fun to work with. And one of the best parts was, like, he really likes pranks. And that's, like, you know, what I specialize in. So when I told him that I actually called uh, uh, Governor Schwarzenegger as Michael Douglas, you know, and did that conversation, I mean, he's, yes. friends, he's friends with both of them. So he was laughing his head off. He couldn't, he couldn't even believe that I pulled it off. And he's like, let me hear you, Michael Douglas. And I'm like, Danny, it's great to see you. Me and my wife love you. And he was, he's sitting, he's like, I've known Michael for years. That is the greatest Michael Douglas I've ever heard. So it was, it was really cool. <laughs> and, uh, the, the movie was fun and it's going to be fun to watch. And that's, uh, uh, again, uh, to, to, to have your first starring role with Danny DeVito. It's a big deal. It's cool. And uh, anybody who wants to see the trailer, uh, we're actually trying to generate some uh, some buzz right now on the Internet. Go to SkylarStone.com, and uh, there's a pop-up right on the main screen. And uh, just click on it and watch the trailer. It's it's called Housebroken, and it's it's awesome. Now, you, of course, are doing stand-up anywhere and everywhere, but you're coming uh, back to Vegas here on the uh, 31st. Is that the deal of October? Yep. I'll be in Vegas on the 31st. I'm doing Pittsburgh November 13th through 15th. And I'm doing um, Sacramento and Kalamazoo, Michigan in um, December. You're on the road so much. How do you get the time to be tied down to doing a movie? Well, I mean, well, you, that's what you make time for the most. Because, I mean, I, first and foremost, I consider myself an actor. I kind of like just feel like an actor that does stand-up for uh, therapy. <laughs> so, ah. you know, I mean, a lot of other guys, like, do stand-up and then become actors. Like, I would way rather act than do stand-up any day of the week. So, Look at that. Uh, so you're having fun. Uh, I know you're having fun. I'm on your mailing list. I see what you're up to. <laughs> I'm having a lot of fun. Um, I actually have a really funny story for you because obviously I've been listening to you, Father, for years. And yes. uh, I try and take your advice. I have not always heeded it well. Sometimes I get a little too wrapped up and spend a little too much money. And, uh, oh, you know, boy. engagements get called off and stuff like that. But this is uh, this is actually a good story. So um, back in April, uh, I had this show, and I was doing the improv down in Irvine, and uh, I was with a girl at the time, and she uh, actually was with me at the show. And at the end of my show, it's just like you said, I have a newsletter. This girl comes up to me, and uh, she wants to sign up for my newsletter. Well, the girl that I was with was kind of staring at her like, you know, this girl is way, way, way hotter than I am. And I'm kind of giving her a look back like, yeah, yeah, absolutely, she is. And so like, she wrote down her email. She put like a heart next to it. She put her phone number. She put her MySpace page. I mean, practically like her coordinates so I could smoke signal if I wanted to. <laughs> and so, I mean, this girl literally, I mean, she stood out amongst the crowd. She was like John McCain at Coachella. It was beautiful. <laughs> so, it's like she bent over to sign up on the newsletter and, I mean, every comic, every bouncer, every attendee is staring. So, like I said, she put all her information down. And at the time, I didn't think anything of it because, you know what, I was crazy in love with that crazy girl. <laughs> and so, well, guess what ended? That that uh, relationship. So, right away, I'm like, alright, it's time to go to the back burner girl. So, I called her up and um, she's like, yeah, she goes, listen, this would be a great time for us to hang out. I'm divorced now. And I'm like, whoa, I didn't even know you were married. Okay. So I'm like, okay, dramatic, hyperbolic, just how I like them. Let's get nasty. So I, um, I go down to visit her and, uh, she lives down in Laguna Beach. So, you know, she comes from money and stuff and she's, you know, expecting a lot from me. And she goes, listen, I want you to take me and my daughters out to eat. And I'm like, oh, what would oh, Tom boy. do? What oh, would Tom do? Boy, oh boy. I gave in. I gave in. I took uh, her out to eat. She chose a French restaurant. I'm like, I've oh. never even been to a French restaurant, so I imagine that's pretty expensive. So we go to this French restaurant, and the whole time she keeps going. She goes, you know, Jade. She brought her two kids. She's like, you know, Jaden. He just he does he he goes to the bathroom and stuff in his pants, and I don't know what to do. And I'm like, I am not Doctor Phil. Like, don't. Ask. She's like asking me for advice. She was asking me to take him to the bathroom, and I'm like going to the bathroom with the kid, and it's like three men and a baby. I'm like holding this kid at like weird angles, trying to get oh. like. And I'm like, I don't even know what I'm doing. You know what I mean? Like, oh my god, are you killing me with this? I know. I'm sorry. So I, I go back to her place, and I mean. We had a good time in the room. It was, you know, the kids go to bed, and there were more positions in her bed than a football field that night. It was a very good time. We even 60 forward, which is when you take a pool cue like that. You know? <laughs> um, so we had a really good time. We're hooking up, and we went all night. And uh, the next thing you know, she kept calling me saying, hey, I want you to come down and take us out to dinner again. I'm like, oh, my oh, gosh. Boy. This is just ridiculous. So I go down there. Tom, you're going to hate me. I go down there one more time, and I buy them all dinner again. <sighs> I'm so embarrassed even telling you this. You didn't go to another French restaurant, did you? No, no. This time I'm like, let's just get chips and salsa and some fajitas. You know what I mean? So we went to like Chili's or something. I don't know. Yeah. So 
uh, I take her out and uh, we go back to her house and um, this time like you know I decided not to spend the night so like in the middle of the night I get up and I go listen I'm gonna go so she walks me outside and my car's gone and I'm like, why is my car gone? She told me I could park right there. She goes, oh, no. Oh, no. My husband. And I go, what? I go, excuse, excuse me? Oh. <laughs> your, 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 your husband? Like, she's like, you knew I was married? I'm like, yeah, I didn't know he's still like in the picture and stuff. Like, you know, she was, oh, he wants me back. He, he comes over all the time and, and looks to my windows. And I'm like, so, so you, you think my car's been stolen by your husband? She's like, well, I don't know. I mean, he does all kinds of crazy. He deals drugs. I'm like, well, your husband deals drugs? <laughs> And I'm like, does he deal heroin? Because if so, I never want to talk to you. And does he deal pot? If so, I want his number. You know, so I'm like trying to figure this out. So she goes, no, no, it's just pot. You know, he just deals like a little stuff here and there. And so uh, it turns out he didn't touch the car. She called him and yelled at him. He didn't touch the car. I got towed. So I go to this tow place, and it costs like $285 to get your car out of Laguna Beach tow. So $285 later, also a $250 dinner. So now I'm 500 in the hole just for a whole, you know what I mean? So <laughs> now... She um she comes out and she goes uh I, I get there and I don't have my registration in the car so uh, the guy goes you have to go all the way back to Studio City and get your registration before you can get oh. this car out oh she, you ready for this she goes I can't drive you to Studio City tonight you're gonna, you're gonna have to like find someone else I'm like oh my god so I got a buddy in Laguna Beach to to drive me all the way to Studio City get my registration come back down there give it to the guy then when I got there my credit card gets denied. Oh, so now, God. yeah. So my credit card is denied, and I go, "Why is it denied?" He goes, "Well, you better just call your bank." So I called the bank, and they go, "Yeah, you made some unusual purchases tonight, like a two hundred eighty dollars dinner." I'm like, "Yeah, like a two hundred eighty dollars dinner? I usually don't do that, you know. That is unusual, isn't it?" So they take the block off, and they're like, "You know, okay, we just wanted to make sure you made that purchase." I'm like, "No, no, no. Someone made me make that purchase." So next thing you know, I get my car. I'm, I'm driving home. I'm furious, and I, I vow to never talk to this girl again. So then she literally just hits me up like a couple weeks ago. She goes, listen, I want to make this up to you. I'm, uh, I'm moving away from here because I want to get away from him. So I'm moving down, like, you know, to LA and stuff. And, and uh, I'm going to live in this killer building downtown. And I'm like, listen, I don't want to hear about it. She says, no, 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 check out this building. So she sends me this website. I just showed you guys the website. It's this building called TintinWilshire.com. Yeah. And so I went to the website. I'm like looking at it. It's like the most beautiful place I've ever seen. It's like a high rise condo with like pools on the top. So she's like, listen, you can just, you know, come down and stay whenever you want. I'm only going to be there a couple nights a week. So I've been like staying at this place like, <laughs> <laughs> like there's tons of celebrities at this place and like studio execs. It's like a place like where like A listers live. And now like I'm walking around there and it's like, hey, look at Skyler. He's hitting the big times, you know. <laughs> He's got a Devito film out, and so I keep going to this place. And like you know, I'm just I'm literally like just like li- sitting in the lap of luxury now, all because this one girl's trying to make up to me like for that bad night. So no, oh, my, it's been hilarious, and it's still going. Now what happens if the condom breaks, Scott? Uh, who says I use them? I mean, what? No! I mean, um, I'm just saying. I, I JS. I'm just saying. Oh, ah. So I've, 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 I've literally just been at that building all the time. Like literally, like oh, my friends, are like where's Skylar? Oh, he's at Ten Ten Wilshire. I mean, this place is sick. <laughs> now everyone knows where to find you. I don't care. You know, it's, it's, come on down. Come on down. Ten Ten Wilshire. It's the most beautiful place in downtown. <laughs> It's awesome. Ten ten. Well, what was it? The gas company headquarters at one time, or was it ten ten Wilshire? Hey, I don't know what it was, but I mean, they totally redid the place. Like, I literally, I, I, I'll like just sometimes wake up in the morning and like I'm just on the roof and like I feel like I'm in like a Michael Bay film. It's like the most beautiful rooftop in the world. There's like sun coming in. I'm like swimming through the pool. And oh, by the way, my ex girlfriend lives in the building. I found out. No. Yeah. So then one night I'm hooking up with her, and then I go, Hey, I'm going to take <laughs> off. I go to my ex girlfriend's three floors up. And I hook up with her, and then I leave, and um, the, the first girl calls me up and says, hey, I'm going to go back to Laguna Beach for the night so you can have my place. So I go out to a bar, and I bring a girl home from the bar <laughs> to her place, pulled a hat trick, three girls one night. Triple shifter. Yes. Very nice. Thank you. Thank you. We love that. <laughs> it's all good. So you're keeping busy, I say. Yeah, you know. You know what I mean? Just banging. I don't know where you get the time to really work with all this. Just hooking up with, with tens at ten ten. You know what I mean? That's just that's, what I do. That, that's all good. Very nice. All right, we're gonna look for you at Housebroke with Danny DeVito. When does the film open? Uh, hopefully in January, February. We're, we're trying to get a distributor now, so you guys got to go to SkylarStone dot com and click on the trailer and watch it, and just to help me generate some online buzz. Fantastic! And here in Vegas at the Hard Rock on October thirty first. Yep, and I got a show uh, this Tuesday at the Hollywood Improv. 10 p.m. If you guys, any Tom Likas listener, if you guys email me, Skyler at SkylarStone.com, I'll give you free tickets to the show. Sounds good to me. Hey, good to see you. Thanks for stopping by. You too, man. All right. It's Skylar Stone, everybody. 1-800-LIKE-KISS.
Tom. 5 800 Tom. Like it. Like it. 866. Tom. Like it. Like it. Tom. 1 800 5 800 Tom. I just wanted to tell you who my favorite girlfriend is. Who is that? The next one. <laughs> <laughs> the Tom Like It Show. Thing we can turn here? No, that's not going to work. I've talked right into it like this. What are we doing? Oh, like that? Oh, I feel like his master's voice now on the old RCA Victrola. All right, there we go. I'm going to break my neck now. I have to look up at the microphone. Now I know how women feel when I unzip my fly. Ladies, your neck must really be out of control after a night with me. I'll tell you what. Now, let's turn the mic back up towards my mouth. That's good. one 800 800 tom is our telephone number. By the way, if you're an investor in this company, trust me, we are wasting you, you, They may be wasting money in Washington, D.C., but uh, there's no money being wasted on capital expenditures at CBS. I'll tell you right now, None. It's wide open telephones on the Tom Likas show from Las Vegas at 1-800-5800-TOM. It's 1-800-5800-866. And by the way, if you're in another country, we got calls today from uh, Montreal, for example, and Vancouver. If you're out of the country, uh, you can call our international line. The uh, country code is 1 because we're number 1 with the United States. Country code is one. That's the stock price that Wamu fell below before it fell to zero. Uh, the area code is 323, and the phone number is 520-6211. It's 323-520-6211. All right. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Here comes Mitchell on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How's it going? Going just great. All right. Hey, Todd, I need some advice. You know, I have this invention slash idea. I don't know how to pursue it. I Are you an inventor? About... Or do you My know inventor. someone who's an inventor? Yes. You I are? Mean, yes. Well, Invention Submission Corporation is looking to beat you. I don't trust those air stuff, though. Oh, yeah. You know, tr- I, I looked into the internet. I looked into those uh, one eight hundred numbers on online and stuff like that. I'm but... not recommending them. I was just doing a commercial here. Oh, okay, all right. You sponsored him? No, they don't sponsor us. Uh, not at this time, thank God. But uh, you know, it's like when somebody calls up and says, uh, "Hey, Tom, I got good news." I say, "Why did you save thirty percent on auto insurance by switching to Geico?" Oh, okay, <laughs> I'm a radio guy. That's what I do. I think in commercials. I see. All right, so uh, you're an inventor. Right. And you've invented something. Well, yeah, it's just an idea, and I thought it was, you know. It's, or it's, if you have an idea for an existing invention. It's not an existing invention, no. Okay, you have an idea for a new invention. Exactly. Can you tell us anything about it without giving it away? No, I can't. That's the thing. That's the problem. I, uh, I, I mean, I mean is it, a, uh, the person is I it bigger than a bread box? Is it a widget? Is it a service? What is it? It's actually uh, something that's playable at home. That's one thing I could say. It's a game? Yes. Oh, you invented a game that can be played at home. Right. That's all we need to know. Right. All right. And what is your question? Uh, what do I start? Come on. Like, I don't know who to trust, who, who to, like, you know, um, would I start with the lawyer first? Because, I mean, lawyer fees are extremely high. Because um, I actually spoke to one before, but even lawyers, I wouldn't even know if I could trust them or not. Well, uh, Mitchell, uh, first of all, uh, the way to find a lawyer you trust uh, is if you have a lawyer that you trust that you used for some other purpose. Do you? 
No, no, no. So you have never used an attorney for a, like a car accident or a lawsuit or anything like that? Never. I just actually, uh, one of my friends just came, uh, came out of law school and I spoke with him and he's not familiar with the invention slash pen, uh, pat patenting, uh, stuff. And he just told me, you know what, give me, um, um, I could probably find you someone, but you know, I, I don't know that person, so I want to be able to trust that person. Yeah, but the way you, the way you find an attorney is by talking to a person you trust, right? And getting a recommendation from them. Okay. So if this is somebody you trust, his judgment you trust, you trust him as a person. Let yeah. him let him introduce you to an attorney. Okay. You definitely need an attorney. I look if the if the invention isn't worth hiring an attorney, why even do it? Well, I think it is. Well, if it is, hire an attorney. Well, is that the first step, or is there another step? In my mind, it's the first step because honestly, I've never invented a widget of some kind, uh, a game or a, a toy, or I, you know, my inventions have always been radio programs or stage shows, coming up with titles for things. But uh, as far as something you can hold in your hand, no. Okay. I mean, is there like a contract where, like, if I, to have the attorney sign it just in case he he wants to give it out to somebody else? You know what I'm saying? So My make guess is that the attorney will make you sign a release, and uh, um, you know, it probably will. We'll talk about that. I see. All right. Yeah, I just wanted to know where I start from. I mean, I, I don't trust any of these 1-800 numbers or... These I would not numbers. trust them. I would go to an attorney recommended by someone you do trust. Okay. You know what kind of attorney I'm looking for right now? Yeah, a patent attorney. Patent attorney. Yes. You know how the patent rule works? Because I know you, all you have to do is change 15% of whatever you made and, and the, you could patent it as a different idea, right? Well, what if you invented the next Monopoly game or the next Coca-Cola? You, right, you, right. you you don't want to pay 15%. You want to pay the legal fees. I see. All right. Thank you very much. Tom, can you give me a uh, bong style, please? I certainly can. <coughs> 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Jenny on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Tom, how's it going? It's going okay, Jenny. Right on. Hey, I just wanted to know what that song was you played on the intro from the commercial break. Uh, that's a good question, because I'm not in the studio. I'm in Las Vegas at another studio. Oh, well, then that doesn't help me at all. <laughs> uh, but, but wait a minute. I think Art Webb, our uh, engineer, he might know. Okay. Yeah, it's yes. uh, Torpedoes by KMFDM. KMFDM. That's the name of the band? That's correct. All right, thanks, Tom. There you go, Jenny. All right, you have a good one. You too. There you go. One eight hundred five. Do we uh, service the customer or what? One eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom, it's our telephone number. Patrick is listening to us in Vancouver, British Columbia. Two calls from Vancouver today. Hello, hello, hello Tom. Hello, uh, Patrick. How are you today, Tom? Do you care? Yes, I do. Doing great. How is the weather in Vegas? Hot. That's great. I've, I've listened to you for a long time, Tom. Keep I've, it up. I've listened to you over the computer for like three years now. Really? Oh, yeah. We, we need you over in Vancouver. Well, we were on in Vancouver, and the CRTC made sure they took us off in Vancouver. Yeah, I heard that. I was a little too young to go to the show, though. Sorry you missed it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, what station are you going to be on in Vancouver? Like, I heard that woman that I called, uh, you may be on for like five minutes. Well, uh, I don't know. She, well, I, I only know what you heard. Oh, okay, yeah. I'm so nervous. I've listened to you for a long time. Your rules really work for me. Oh, they, really? Are you getting more ass than a toilet seat? That's right, Tom. Love that. Yeah. Uh, what, what, what are the chances of uh, Las Vegas getting a hockey team? Uh, I heard of a, a Hollywood producer in the, uh, that had the money to make, have a team in Las Vegas. But, um, uh, I heard the same thing. The problem in the National Hockey League 
is that it has many teams that are not doing well financially already, and they don't want to expand. So uh, somebody would have to want to sell their team or move it. Yeah, yeah. And, and honestly, as, as I'm sure like any good hockey fan, you know, uh, that there are too many teams. Yeah, especially in the Southeast. Well, I mean, some of the teams in the Southeast do well, some don't. Yeah, yeah. That's uh, great. But uh, let's face it, uh, the Boston Bruins aren't selling out either. Yeah, well, especially during these hard times, uh, the economy is thinking right now. No, they haven't been selling out for years. Really? And, and the Chicago Blackhawks. Well, they, they, because they stink. Well, the, the deal with the Chicago Blackhawks, they had a bad ownership, and they were televised the games and market the uh, team. Well, but who cares? You know, they stink. They have yeah. stunk. Uh, the Boston Bruins. You know the last time they won the Stanley Cup? Oh, it was a long, long, long time, wasn't it? Uh, yeah, it's like 14 years before you were born. <laughs> Hard to believe. Holy... That's um, one of the original six. That's, yeah, that's right. Boston, Montreal, Toronto. Yeah, that's right. Uh, Toronto, Boston, and Toronto, up. they stink too. Oh, they, they're a horrible team. Well, original we six. Toronto. We hate Toronto just like you guys hate New York. Uh, oh, I, well, I know that because Toronto uh, acts like they're the capital of Canada. Well, that's right. I know <laughs> all about it. Right, Tom, can you please take me out with the bong hit? Here you go. <coughs> we'll see you boys here in Las Vegas this weekend. Come on over, for God's sake. The Tom Likas Show.